Hello, you lot. Welcome to the group chat with Mr. Alan McAnally uh, from Footy Accumulators Morning. and our friends from Betfair. Um, look, Al, we've got to talk about, I know it's been a great 10 days or so for Scotland, apart from the Nation, yep. Nations League result, but <laughs> I want to talk to you about England, okay? Because um, there are a lot of England fans getting on Gareth Southgate's back. Firstly, do you think that that is fair? And I'll just give you the, the record for the year. I know it's been a bit of a disjointed year because of everything that's happened. But they've played eight games, mm-hmm. England. They've won five. They've lost mm-hmm. two. And just uh, the one draw. But they've scored 13 goals out. Um, is this a style problem that the England fans have? What's going on? Um, <clears throat> I think it's unfair for Gareth to get stick. I genuinely do. And I think mainly... Out with the trying times that everybody has to stay in the bubble and get results and try and pick from a squad that might be or might not be available to you. Um, there's been a couple of injuries in there and a couple of young players coming through that have looked fantastic. The only thing, and I go back to the Iceland game, Will, was why in God's name are England playing with two defensive midfield players mm-hmm. against Iceland at Wembley? And I, 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 that I don't get. I genuinely don't. Out with the wonderful result they had, Against the top team, I would maybe can understand it, but it's, it's, it's overly cautious for me, something like that. Um, and the stick that he, he's getting in terms of whatever formation, and let's, let's face it, players win your games, not necessarily formations. That's for sure. They help players to understand where he wants them to play and what they want to do. But it's the players that put it into, um, put it into play. The goals they've scored have been fantastic, and I think England have always looked a danger. I think the frustration, obviously, then, Will, comes from you play Belgium, you get beat 2-0, as well as you played, you lose the game. That's what people don't like, you know, against the top team. And they're beating all the little teams, you know, easy. And you said they've scored whatever it is, how many goals in 13 goals in eight games. Yeah. Look, I think the frustration is, and we can all be managers, can't we, sat at home, even idiots like me who've never played the game or never got near a you know, <laughs> professional setup. But that's what we do, and that's what football fans will always do. But it yeah. just seems, and I know we've, I've had this conversation with you before, Al, but it seems to me so obvious that England, and I appreciate they can't do it against every opposition, but then again, there is an argument to say, why not? Why can England not play a 4-3-3 with the players they've got? You know, we, last week we looked down the squad that England have got, and it seems to make perfect sense. When you look at the way that City and Liverpool play in the Premier League, they've got those type of players. Why can't they play a three? Rashford can play up top you know, wide with Sterling and Kane. And then you can still have a midfield free where Grealish can fit in with a, with a sitter like a, a Rice and still play Mount. You can get all yeah. those players into a 4-3-3, but he seems so determined to play this 3-5-2, <laughs> which eventually just turns into 3-7. And, and, it, and, it, and I guess that's what frustrates people. It, you know, people are saying it's boring to watch. Well, I go back to the very first thing I said. I go back to the Iceland game and two sitting midfielders in front of a back four. I'm like, really? Mm. That's how you need to play. England need to play like that. And with the players you mentioned, and incidentally, we're talking about Grealish playing fantastically well. And what, I'm listening to people on television talking about Grealish now as if he's only just appeared. He's been <laughs> like that for ages. All of a sudden, all the pundits are giving it, well, you know, Jack Grealish can do this and do that. And I'm like, Jack yeah. Grealish has always been able to do that. But he's never been given the opportunity. Now he is, all of a sudden, I'm listening to pundits telling me about Jack Grealish. And I've been saying it for ages anyway. It's a joke. He's good. The boy Foden is fantastic, but mm. I think he can almost play one of the ones in that front three if you were to play a 4 3 3. And you can still play Rice in the middle, defensive midfield player, great player, play Grealish on the left hand side, and play Mason Mount if he wants to play him on the right hand side and still have, you know, heavy up top with Kane, Rashford, whatever side you want them on. So, yeah, at that there, I can understand England fans not being particularly happy because that's how they would want them to play. And incidentally, if he did, and if he did decide to do that, Gareth Southgate, they would cause people real problems, England. Defensively, they've looked pretty good to me, genuinely. You know, Walker's, I don't know, sometimes I, I, I worry about Walker, you know, staying on the pitch for 90 minutes sometimes. He's almost too quick for his own good, and, you know, he's got a little rash challenge in him. But Maguire's been fantastic. I think Tyrone Mings, or I'd rather have Tyrone Mings than Eric Dyer, the centre half. I think he's done fantastically well. And then at full-back on the left-hand side, normally you would say probably Ben Chilwell would play there. I know he picked up an injury, but England are strong. England are really, really strong, genuinely. But this over-cautious against, you know, teams really that you know England are better than, mm. um, that's, I think, where a frustration from a lot of England fans is coming from. Having said that, you just said to me as well, they've scored 13 goals in eight games playing kind of that way. So... 
I just, I just think there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a formation he wants to pick. He always changes, obviously, and maybe the players that are available to him, that's why he maybe tinkers with the formation. Two defensive midfield players for England, I just don't see it, especially at Wembley. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Look, after all these shows, I've only just realised that you've got an Aston Villa coloured wall behind you. So, like, more on yeah. Jack Grealish. That's very... Thanks very much. Uh, I mean, it's the perfect colour, isn't it? Um, yeah, just call it look, Trinity Way. <laughs> the whole end. Look, yeah. um, on, on Grealish, OK, are you impressed with how he has turned things around from an England point of view? Because it wasn't long ago, Al, and I'm talking, what, <clears throat> seven, eight weeks ago, where he wasn't getting a look in. All right, he was getting called up, but because of the pressure from probably from the fans to get him in the squad... But, but Southgate was sticking him on the bench. Now he seems an absolute first name on the team sheet. And I include Harry Kane in that. Yeah. Um, I think, again, it was Gareth. Uh, I don't think he didn't. I don't think he was pressured to play him. I think probably Jack's performances, and I'm talking in training as well, um, mm. who, who likes to be on the ball, who can control the ball, who's happy to be on the ball, who goes that way and not that way. That's an advantage. And all of a sudden, maybe Gareth has said, you know, he's maybe got a little bit more on what I think he's got. Because remember, he has. He, there is a few other players in the England squad that um, you know just maybe might be ahead of Jack Grealish at that time. And there still is, incidentally, players ahead of Jack Grealish uh, in positions that he plays. But I just think that Jack's performances, and you only, by the way, he, he there is no difference to Jack Grealish playing the other way uh, the other night, even against Belgium, than he wasn't doing a year ago. It's exactly how he plays. Mm. Comfortable on the ball, bringing players in. He does get filled a lot and he does go to ground. Not easy, but he's waiting for it. He's cute. He's like, okay, I know he's coming in here, so I'll just get as a fill. You know, okay, that, if that's part of his skill, it certainly is working for him. But in terms of him staying on his feet and working with the ball, he's genuinely like as good as England have got. And that's why yeah. I think Gareth Southgate is playing him. Not necessarily the pressure from the fans. Is Jack Grealish... Al, the closest thing that England have had to Paul Gascoigne? Um, I've heard that. I heard someone say that the other day. I played against Paul and he was really good. I mean, he was really good. Gaza was quick. He was, he was quick over the first couple, but he, he was quite quick running with the ball, Paul, as well. And um, Yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll answer. Yeah, probably, yeah. I like the boy Foden. I like Phil Foden. I think the two of them are very closely matched. Um, they like to try and get goals, and probably the both of them are as good uh, or as close to Gaza in terms of something creative and happy to be on the ball. Um, it's very easy as a football player, and I see it every Saturday players who are not confident, who should be in a position to try and get the ball, mm. that are happy standing next to an opposition player, which means. I can't get the ball here. And let, instead of coming here and receiving the ball, you see it all the time. The two of them, if you give them their own ball on a Saturday, they would be fantastic, to, to, honest, to, be, to be quite frank. You know, they're that good. Gascoigne was, was something special, genuinely special. Um, hey, and they're on the right road. They're on the right yeah. road to, to, to doing maybe something exactly what Paul did. Well, look, lastly on England, it's funny you mentioned Paul, uh, Phil Foden because I was going to say exactly mm. the same thing to, to you, was if okay. you could... Only pick one player out of Grealish and Foden to start for England. Who do you go for? Oh, that's unfair. Villa fans will be screaming at me right now. Grealish, Al, Grealish. I like Phil Foden. I, I tell you, I don't know if anybody's ever said this, Will. And I think I've said it to you before. I think Phil Foden, when he plays for Manchester City, is under more pressure because he's dying, dying to make Pep Guardiola happy. Mm. make Pep realise the player that Pep wants him to be, having learned under David Silva and every other player that's been at Man City. And he goes to England and he plays up that top and gets the odd goal. And I think he plays freer for England than he does for Man City. Honestly, I've thought it for ages that I keep thinking, this young boy Phil Foden is under so much pressure because he's dying to please Pep. Whereas with England, I think he's, he brings all that experience from Man City and he, he, he does what he does for England almost like too easy for me. I mean, the bit of skill down the line the other night there is exactly that what he's been taught and what his confidence is when he's with England. At Man City, I think he just, he doesn't play with the reins on, but I think there's more to come from Phil Foden. Jack mm. Grealish is fantastic. 
but I'll upset all the Villa fans and say I'm going to have to go for Foden because <laughs> he genuinely, genuinely excites me. And I think when he plays for City, he's still trying to please Pep too much. And England are seeing the benefit because when he comes to England, he's almost got something off his shoulders and he just goes and he's brilliant. Yeah. I'm not saying Southgate's a soft touch, but is that probably to do with the rocket he'd get from Pep if he tried things and it didn't come uh, off? <laughs> maybe, but at the same time, I think Pep would kind of want him to try it. I just, you know, there'll be a, there'll be a, a little sprinkle of gold dust that'll, that'll drop for Phil Foden at Man City. Everybody will go, where's David Silva's back? He, yeah. Just running the game, doing his thing. Um, but uh, I'd maybe, maybe try to get in the Man City team is uh, a little bit more difficult keeping your place <laughs> than it is in the England team. Al, so we've talked about Gareth Southgate, right? Maybe mm -hmm. the England fans down the line would like to see Mr. Steven Gerrard in the Ooh. job. Such a great player for England. Uh, and he's ripping up trees. I know you don't really necessarily want to praise Rangers too much, but he's doing a great <laughs> job there, isn't he? Brilliant job. So much so that uh, Neil Lennon, who I don't think has done an awful lot wrong, has been questioned about his own management style, even if he should be the manager of Celtic, because Rangers, he has turned Rangers... I mean, the results that Rangers got in Europe were astoundingly good. Astoundingly good. Um, uh, little uh, Arfield, um, I sp you know, the boy that they signed from, from Burnley. Scott Arfield, yeah. um, Scott Arfield, great lad. I know Scott from ages ago, and I've spoke to him last year, and he said, it's, you know, it's great. It's, it's really good, you know. Um, and things at Rangers are going down the right line. He's, he's had a couple of hurdles to come over as well, Stephen. You know, we're dealing with players. You know, mm. Morales comes to the fore on that one. But in terms of the unity he's got there, uh, even without, you know, the, the whole of Ibrox filled with everybody baying the ball into the net, it's hard to fault what Gerard's done. Um, and to be honest, of all the jobs you could take in Scotland, maybe at the time he took it, you know, you're going to be like judged on the fact is, can you topple Celtic off the top? Mm. Now, is it, they're in an unbelievably good position. They look as if... Even two years ago, you were like, I don't know whether Rangers will win this game. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think they've gone into the games much heavier favourites than before. And it's all down to the manager. Players have done a great job, incidentally. His recruitment seems to be pretty good because, you know, he's not exactly spent buckets of money, Will, has he? So I would imagine that a lot of England fans would be thinking that, you know, Gerard just might be uh, the next in line with the job he's done at Rangers, which... Incidentally, I don't think he's actually finished at Rangers yet. I, I think he might be there a little bit longer than people think. It's going to be really interesting this season, isn't it? Because uh, nine points clear Rangers of Celtic at the moment. I know Celtic have got mm. those two games in hand. Yeah. But Rangers unbeaten this season. They've scored 37 goals uh, in, their, in their 14 games. And they've only mm. conceded three. They've conceded three goals all season. Mm. Really shored up at the back, and it's kind of I don't know it's been it's been building, isn't he, since he arrived at Ibrox in 2018 to this mm. this moment where he can finally topple them, and that has been the the challenge all along for him. Could Absolutely. you could you see him out uh, going back to the England question in the England dugout one day? Uh, yes, I could. Yeah, I think for for me, I think it's an inevitability. But does he go to England before he goes to Liverpool? I think that's maybe more of an inevitability. So. I think it might be down the line. Um, and I suppose then it'll all depend a, when he gets the Liverpool job, not if. In my opinion, I think he, he will be a Liverpool manager. Um, I think he's proven at the moment. And by the way, a lot of people in England will be like, okay, he's done a good job with, you know, with Rangers and being in Scotland. Or Rangers is a huge football club. You know, problems to deal with, out with the weight coming from the other side of the city who have dominated for so long. Um, so I think maybe down the line, yes, is the answer to your question. Well, I don't know if it's going to be within the next five or six years, though, because uh, I do think he'll be a Liverpool manager before he'll be a, uh, an England manager. Wow, that's interesting. So, so you do think, essentially, you know, if Klopp's going to be there still long-term and going to sign, you mm -hmm. know, well, as he has done, a, a long-term contract to Anfield, mm -hmm. you think that, essentially, Stevie G could, could succeed Jurgen Klopp with a bit of England in the middle? That's what I think. I genuinely think that. That's why I said I don't think he's finished at Rangers yet. I don't think that he'll be bailing out of Rangers anytime soon because I think he, I think he, he even looks as if he's enjoying it as well. Um, and he certainly he's never shocked a challenge as a football player and it doesn't look as if he's shocking any challenges as a manager. I can only heap praise on Steven Gerrard that the job he's done at Rangers and I think a lot of Liverpool fans will be wanting him to take that job after Mr Klopp's finished um, because I think he's probably destined for the German job. 
You know, I mean, everything comes in succession, obviously, Will, doesn't it, after all? I mean, we've spoken about Pep Guardiola. Does he go? Does he stay? Will he be at Man City much longer? You know, people are now saying the thing about Steven Gerrard. Will he stay at Rangers longer? Will he, you know, succeed Gareth Southgate? In my opinion, it'll be leaving Rangers probably to get a Liverpool job and then a certain future England manager. I think it'll go in that cycle, to be honest. But it won't be for a couple of years because I think the job he's done at Rangers is brilliant. I think he'll stay there at least for that. And then we'll see what happens at Liverpool for the next couple of years under Mr Klopp, who I think eventually will be a German manager. Right, let's talk about Liverpool a little bit more because if you're a Liverpool fan, right, you must be thinking, what the hell is going on? You look at the injury, the absentee list, right? Listen to this. I'm going to read some of them out for you. We're going to read all of them out. There are 10 names on there. Most of them, first team shoe-ins. Thiago, knee injury. Trent Alexander-Arnold, calf. Fabinho, hamstring. Joe Gomez, knee. Jordan Henderson, captain, hamstring. The Ox, knee. Andy Robertson, hamstring injury. Mo Salah, coronavirus. Virgil van Dijk, we know, big knee injury. And now Reese Williams. And I know he's not a first-team starter, but he probably would have been close to being. He would have been, yeah. Because of everyone out. And, you know, he's got a hip injury. So you're, you're looking at probably Nat Phillips, who, who played, didn't he, recently for, for Liverpool, coming yeah. in and centre-back for a long period of time. They've got Joel Matip back, which is great for them. But that is a huge list to have before Christmas, Al. That's quite unbelievable. I mean, even if you said to, to Jurgen Klopp, you'll probably get four or five injuries before Christmas. But like, yeah, I probably will. Mm-hmm. Not ten. Not eight. Not six, and not injuries. Incidentally, injuries that, you know, it's not as if I could be back in a week, maybe maybe two Saturdays be back. These are three, four, five, six, seven Saturdays that they're missing. That's a lot. Even for a team like Liverpool, it's a lot. And you mentioned, you know, Williams as well. He is right now a starter because of the players that are missing for them. Mm-hmm. Darren Henderson missing with Fabinho in the middle of the park is, is disastrous considering that Fabinho looked as though he was going to be the replacement for Van Dijk at least meantime to play in the back four. It's just uh, quite astounding, quite astounding. And incidentally, there'll be people that have bet Liverpool at the start of the season to retain the title, and now they'll be thinking, oh my God, if we can hang on to Man City or whoever's coattails at the top of the league, if we can get to the end of January, we'll be delighted. Mm. Do they have to? And I've asked you this before, but now with that list, and obviously it's getting longer, and you think any, mm. any more on top of that, which is bound to happen over a busy Christmas period and going into the new year, it could be catastrophic for Liverpool going forward, but do they have to sign a defender? Do you think he's already pinpointed a centre-back that they have to sign in January now because of what's happened? Well, if you remember, uh, as soon as Van Dijk got injured, I said, well, that's that then. They have to buy in January. Way before Henderson, way before anybody's injuries, Robertson, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Fabinho, way before, I said immediately, if Liverpool want to win the Champions League, and retain the Premier League, they'll have to buy a centre half in January. Yeah. End of. I don't care about the other the other injuries. Hopefully, will will progress and the boys will be back. He is the biggest miss for Liverpool. I, every listen, the front three have been fantastic. Midfield have been so industrious, but he is, I would say, seventy five percent of the reason that Liverpool are champions of England. Mm. That's it for me. So Liverpool have to buy in January. Regardless of the other injuries, Van Dijk is a miss of humongous proportions. As a man getting chains in the dressing room, you look across and you're like, big man's in the team today. Everyone will be fine. Mm. It's not like that anymore. And it's a psychological thing for some of the players. Now it's been you know, highlighted so much more and escalated because of even more injuries. It's, 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 it's an unfortunate situation that Klopp's Liverpool's going to be in, but they're going to have to deal with it and deal with it they'll do. But January, they will be spending money. It's going to be really interesting, the game at Anfield, isn't it, Al, on Saturday? Uh, Liverpool yeah. taking on uh, Leicester and the, the late game. And mm. you, know, you look at that, that injury list, in terms of the front three, and I know Jota had played even when all the front three were fit, but Jota will mm. slip right into Mo Salah's place and that'll be no problem. And you know, the, the form yeah. he's in, that's, that's not a bad move. But when you look uh, from the other side of the coin, at uh, uh, Jamie Vardy training this week, he'll be licking his lips, won't he? Oh. Coming up against that that sort of absolutely disjointed defence and makeshift defence. Yeah, and did you did you tell me he's got a good record against Liverpool? Yeah, I think he's, he's got. Yeah, he's got. He's got. <clears throat> put it this way: if you're Jamie Vardy and you play the way Jamie Vardy plays, even Brendan Rodgers, remember, who is an ex-Liverpool manager. There's a little sprinkling of everything on Saturday at, uh, at Anfield. So, 
It begins at Anfield, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. Anfield, and um, the top of the table, Leicester. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's, we've got plenty there to look forward to, and Jamie Vardy will be like, right, I'm playing on everybody's shoulder. I'm going to be going that way because there's no need for me to be going this way and put mm. Liverpool defences under as much pressure as you possibly can. I will, I will throw in that they do have one of the best goalkeepers, by the way, Liverpool, but he might have to be simply sensational over the next two months to make sure Liverpool stay within that top two, top three in the league. And this is the thing, Al, isn't it? Just lastly on Liverpool, they've lost that, that leadership voice. I know it's going to come from Klopp and it's going to come from, you know, even Van Dijk just being around the dressing mm. room. But on the pitch, that's so crucial, isn't it? You saw it with Manchester City, you know, over the years, yep. losing Vincent Company, even losing Laporte last season. You lose the mm. voice, even though you've got a, a vocal goalkeeper, you need that in, in defence as well. Yeah, you do. I, mean, I played loads of teams where... You know, sometimes if it's not going right, you look across and you think, oh, right, okay, you know, get your finger out. I mean, I was, I was very fortunate, touch wood, that I played with some really, really good captains and really good football teams. But just sometimes when things are not going for you, it's good to look across and see, A, your captain, normally one of your more influential players within the football club, just to, to give you a kick in the pants when you need it, when, when things are maybe not going for you. So that's what Liverpool are going to have to do. It'll be interesting to see who steps up, by the way. I mean... You've got huge experience with Milner in the team. Um, I would imagine he'll step forward, but you're obviously looking at the front three. I know you still say it's unfortunate that blinking COVID thing has got more Salah, which is a nightmare, but Jota will fit in. I don't see Jota screaming and shouting at some of the players, but they're going to have to have some captains from somewhere because that's what Liverpool are going to be missing for sure. Yeah. Um, another big, big game this weekend. I'm at uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on Saturday. Ooh, it's the half five. Tottenham against, against Manchester City. City. Which looks yeah. straight after the international break. is It's a sort of curious timing, really, isn't it? Because who knows what we're going to find. And those players have played a lot of minutes. I know you watched um, Germany against Spain and Ferran Torres did, was yeah. absolutely brilliant, wasn't he, in, in, in that game? But they haven't stopped. They haven't had an arrest at all, these guys, when you play at that sort of level. Um, what kind of game are we expecting there? What kind of matchup between two great managers in, in Jose Mourinho and, and Pep Guardiola? I was at this game last year, and you remember it, Tottenham won. And it was Steven Bergwijn's yeah. debut, 1-2-0, but Bergwijn got the first goal. And, and, and they absolutely deserved it, um, Tottenham. And the way they're going this season, how are they are going to make it difficult for City again? Yeah, I think they will, for sure. I think Mourinho will be licking his lips, by the way. You talked about Vardy going to Anfield. I think Mourinho will be looking forward to this because he knows that City are under pressure and are, are, are always going to be under pressure because of the names they've got at the football club and because of the manager that's at the football club. Uh, I'll be looking forward to this game Saturday, actually. I forgot this was one of the games and you've done well bagging yourself that one. That's a, that's a, that's a beauty. Um, yeah, having, well, I, I'll just go back very quickly. I, I watched the Spain Germany game. Spain were brilliant. Ferran Torres was fantastic. I mean, he was just so good. You know, he, he just, he reminded me a little bit you know, the way we've, we've talked about Phil Foden, you know, he, he ghosted in, he played taking the ball in tight areas and, pan, you know, his assists, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it'll be exciting, an exciting game for City as well. Listen, they've got some wonderful players. The only problem at the moment when I think about a, a game like this, Will, is A, who's available after the internationals because both are littered with international football players. All have been travelling, all have been playing at least two games and let's see what the starting lineups are before we get too excited in terms of how you, what way you think the game's going to go. But fingers crossed, if they'll be fit, um, and I think that City will win by a goal, but it'll be a great game. Because mm. City are actually, you know, despite the, the troubles this season and a lot of those goals that they've conceded, they've conceded nine, which actually at this stage of a season after seven games, because don't forget City have played two fewer than a lot of other teams, or at least one fewer. Yeah. Um, they've, they've never uh, conceded as many goals in that period of time. They've had the fewest shots uh, on target and the fewest goals scored since Guardiola has been there, which is quite amazing. Oh. But the flip side of that is that they've actually shored up defensively, you could argue. You know, games against Sheffield United, keeping a clean sheet. The Arsenal game at the Etihad, you know, a 1-0 mm -hmm. win. It's not often you see a 1-0 Pep Guardiola win. Uh, you know, it's normally a 4-3 or, 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 or yeah. they've absolutely whitewashed a whitewasher, uh, whitewasher team. So that, that partnership, which is um, it, it's building, isn't it, between Laporte and Diaz, when you look at what's happening at Liverpool, and it's been absolutely decimated, that back line, cities, mm -hmm. it's going in the right direction. Yeah, that's why I said I thought it'd be tight, because I think City have looked better. I think both of the players you mentioned, Diaz and, and Laporte, have looked very good. Fullback areas I haven't got a problem with. I like boy Cancelo, by the way. I think he's really good. 
Um, and the goalkeeper's excellent. Uh, and they do have players. And I suppose with he, 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 Jesus coming back, is it Jesus? Jesus. Jesus. Um, Jesus. Uh, he, you know, he bagged the goal, and you know he'll be he'll be bouncing to to prove to his manager that you know Aguero is not required. Um, and on the other hand, of course, you've got you know a three for for Spurs, especially Harry Kane, who didn't play all the all the all the minutes with England. Uh, he'll be trying to prove something to uh, Manchester City and, and everybody you know, that, that, that watches Harry Kane. So it's going to be a really really good game. I just think defensively, I'm still questioning Spurs. Yeah. rather than Man City. And that's where I think maybe Jesus might pop up with the winner, but it'll be tight and it'll be a wonderful game. Because as though Mourinho has maybe attacked these games overly cautious, I think he'll be a little bit more, and I don't mean cavalier is not the right word to use, but he's got players in his team that like to go forward. Mm. And I think he'll encourage that to try and put City under pressure. It's going to be a super game. It'll be a really, yeah. really good game Saturday night. Uh, and look, the Lionel Messi story is recircling. Is it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Listen, I honestly don't think he'll go to Aston Villa. I, 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 I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> I had to take two seconds to work out what was going on there. Look, I mean, we, we talked about it loads, didn't we, till the cows came home. And uh, the cows still haven't come home because he's very much still at Barcelona. But the rumours are, again, that, it, that it's, it's, a, it's a move that City are going to go back in for in January. And if this to, is to be Pep's last season, he wants to go out big. You know, who knows what's happening to Aguero down the line as well. There's a lot of big decisions that need to be made at Manchester City. But we do know the one thing, even if they get Lionel Messi there on a loan for three days, they oh. want Messi in a City shirt and they want that to be the, the legacy that, that Pep leaves. Wow. Messi to Man City again. Well, first and foremost, I obviously got it wrong because I said to you, I have never heard Lionel Messi saying I'm leaving Barcelona and I genuinely thought it would have happened. And to be quite honest with you, I still think it would have happened had he, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a billion pound buyout or some billion euros buyout. I mean, you forget about things like that in players' contract, which to be honest, is probably never going to happen. But then again, I think he leaves under different terms in January if he wants to leave well, I think, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. It's, now so, in, it's now in his, it's in his court. Correct, exactly. So he either signs a new contract with, with, um, with Barcelona, which will be pretty hefty, you can imagine, or he is so cheesed off with the previous uh, dictate, not, it's not a dictatorship, is it? The, the, the board and the, the, the chairmen and, and the presidents, rather, I should Presidency, say, that, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, that run the, the, the show at uh, Barcelona and Real Madrid, et cetera, et cetera, that he does genuinely think, I've done it all here. I've done everything. And nobody can point the finger at me in Barcelona. I know they don't want me to go, but sometimes as a football player, you're like, I, I, I just wonder what it would be like. I wonder yeah. what it would be like. And even thinking, Messi to leave Barcelona, even as I'm saying it now, I'm like, God, that is going to look so strange if he ever puts a, di a different football shirt on. Mm -hmm. But... You know, if he's going to go anywhere, then I'm going to go. He goes to Man City for some reason. Yeah. Pep's there. And, 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 and I'll ask you a question because you, you like Manchester City. Is it just me? I don't think Pep Guardiola will not be the manager next year. I, I'd love to agree with you. And we've had this chat before, haven't we? And as the weeks go on and on, and, you know, depending who you read and who you listen to, and, you know, we never ever hear Pep give a straight answer with it. Uh, I'd love to believe that that is the truth. And I think with Premier League fans in general would just, you know, even if you're a Liverpool or a Manchester United fan, why would you want Pep to leave City? All right, they're not going to be as good, but you're not going to get to play against a Pep Guardiola team. And, and, no. and we all love that type of football. But I just, I just think that he feels like he's done it. All right, he hasn't won the really? Champions League and he, and he hasn't won three back-to-back -back Premier League titles. But look, he's done it back-to-back. -back. He, he's ticked all the boxes. He's changed the football. He's changed the culture, the philosophy, the style of the club. And uh, you know, well, do you not think he's building another team again? You know, with bringing Diaz in, he is, you know, he's, he's got Laporte, he's got Cancelo, he's got Young Foden, he keeps Le Bruyne, he'll bring a striker in, etc., etc., etc. And just say, for instance, let's go hypothetically crazy here Messi comes in, he ain't leaving Messi. No, 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 that I, that I, he signs a three year contract. Yeah, no, that I would 100% agree with because you know, if Messi comes in. And and then suddenly Pep is out the door six months later. And Messi's like, hold mm. on, Pep, this is you know no. Manchester. Yeah, exactly. And he's sitting there in the, 
you know, driving yeah. down the M62 in the, in the rain, uh, thinking, what on earth am I doing? <laughs> but I just feel, and I've said this to you before, and I may well be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong, City fans. Yeah. But this is a guy, and you don't agree with the Italy thing, but I still think he wants the big five, and he wants that as a trophy to say, I've done all five. He's not going to manage internationally. He's 49 years old. And I just think having been there as long as he has, this would be, you know, five seasons. He only was ever at Barcelona for four, a club that is entrenched in every, every no. centimetre of his body. True. And, uh, you know, and while he is in his, in his eyes still young, you know, beneath 50, uh, what else has he got to prove at City? He wins the Champions League, that's it. Everyone's banging on about the Champions League. That will mm -hmm. come eventually at City at some stage to the club. Yeah. You know, whether it's 10 oh, years down the line, whether it's this season, it will come. That pressure has been put on Guardiola and everyone's sort of saying that, oh, he won't leave until he's got that. I, I hope I'm wrong and I hope that we sign Messi and he's there for the next five years, uh, Pep Guardiola. <laughs> I just don't. But Except, I can't. I'll, give, I'll give you something, Will. You're right. And I was obviously joking that he would much prefer to be at Aston Villa, naturally. <laughs> but um, they, they have, and it was, I can't remember, it was a Spanish journalist, I think, uh, was speaking about it and he actually brought it up. I don't think he was actually asked the question. It, it must have been on his mind and on the tip of his tongue because he actually brought it up. And I was like, oh God, I'd forgotten about that. And then all of a sudden you're like, and he can do what he wants. It'll be a big decision in January. What Leon Null Messi decides to do. And I'm thinking, wow, where can he go? I would imagine City. I mean, okay, you're not, forget about City here. What are you going to show me? What are you going to show me? Messi. <laughs> Merry I'm Christmas. Feeling all I know everything about you. Now get on the plane. Get Google on the plane. Could, could you sign my could you say my book, Lionel, <laughs> please? Could you say my book? Well, what my point was going to be, right? Forget about Man City, right? Where else can he go if he leaves Barcelona, Messi? He would he, nowhere. I mean, unless he does a Ronaldo thing and goes to Juventus for a year or something like that, you know, the equivalent of that. But yeah, no, nowhere, nowhere. So, yeah, well, the, the first and foremost, Will, and I know we're taking a bit of time on this, who can afford Lionel Messi? No one. Paris Saint-Germain. Paris Saint-Germain? Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. Manchester United? No. I don't think they could. I don't think they could. Well, they're, give, they're giving Cavani 400 grand a week or whatever he's getting. Well, yeah, but they've got to times that by about three, haven't they, in terms of, and then get rid of Cavani because he can't have all of those. You know, it's, I don't yeah. know, in the current structure that they've got, I don't think it works for Manchester United. So Juvent, so let's go to Italy. Juve, maybe. AC, no. Napoli, no. no. It's a it's a real conundrum for Inter for Lionel Messi as well. By the way. Inter, I did think about Inter in terms of money that they could afford someone like like him. But we do come back full circle and think City just seems a destination that I think he would be happy with. Genuinely, a because of Pep Guardiola and be the financial side of things. So it'll be interesting, genuinely interesting. And I can't wait for January to see what he decides. Please, Lino, please. Sign my book. <laughs> Al, we're back with our uh, suggested winning acca for everyone. <laughs> after, uh, that, that, that's uh, how you listen to me. Just seriously, suggested is exactly the word, because if you listen <laughs> to us, you'll go straight to the poor house. <laughs> yes. Uh, we've got three oh. of the four internationals wrong, uh, which is good. But anyway... This is our chance. This is our chance where it all comes good this week. Darren Hughes from Betfair is here. We're looking at Saturday three o'clock games, Darren. So um, I'll pick one in the Prem. I'm going to go for Alan's old boys. He's painted his wall in, uh, in, in tribute of them. Aston Villa to beat Brighton at Villa Park. And then I'm going to go for one in the champ, uh, Darren. I'm going to go for, uh, this is slightly controversial because Alan, I think you, you're at Deep Dell, aren't you, this weekend? Uh, yeah, because it's Pulis's first game for... You're not going for Chef Wed, are you? No, go for Chef Wednesday. Pulis' oh, first oh, game in charge. Oh, the second bottom. Me. But Pulis no is not going to lose his first game in charge. And, and Preston's form at home is struggling a little bit, Al, I think. Yeah, they, there's some... I'm going to go... I'm going to go four or five in the bounds they lost. I think they picked it up yeah. maybe a little just before the international break, but the form at home has been just incredibly bad for Preston. Incredible, yeah. Mm. So maybe you'll be right, actually, Will. <laughs> what do you think of those two, Darren? I think two teams are contrasting forces. Like Villa have been a revelation of sorts in the Premier League this year. I mean, they've been a little bit higher up the table than they are now, but they've actually been very, very solid. Like, if you think about the miracle they had to pull off to even fucking stay in the Premier League last year, do you know what I mean? It was It's something else to have them where they are at the moment. Then you look at Sheffield Wednesday, floundering at the bottom of the championship. Like, 
they really need to turn it around quickly. But I'm always a huge fan of the angle of a new manager. I really, really like it. I think some, you can come across the worst teams. The worst time to play a bad team or a team that seems to be struggling is when they've sacked their manager. Because yeah. the players just, they seem to come together. Um, they, they, they seem to kind of to, to, to bind together, come in under a new manager and just pull off shock results. I remember United going to, might have been Wigan one year after they sacked Paul Jewell and they, abs- they got absolutely trounced. Same thing with Fulham. This is back in the day in the Premier League. So I really like that angle. I think you could be on to two, two solid selections there, Will. Yeah. Well, I've just, I've just thought of something, Will. When I give him one of mine, he's going to be like, Al, oh, what have I just told you? Because I <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to go Swansea at home to Rotherham. I think that's okay. a shoe in I genuinely do with a great respect to Rotherham. But yeah. my other one, and he's just lost his job, Koku, which means Derby don't have a manager. I was going to go for Bristol City. Yeah. So my, my two is Swansea and Bristol City, whereas Darren oh. just told me exactly why I shouldn't be betting Bristol City. I know, but, that's the thing, isn't it, Darren? It's like you think with, with Koku gone and, and you know Rooney now probably auditioning for the job, it's, I don't know, is that a dangerous one? Yeah, I suppose you, you could definitely look at it from that from that perspective. I just Derby just seem to be so, so bad. I mean, like, it, all the rules go out the window when it comes to them. Anything I've seen of them this season... It, they're 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 very with all due respect they're very very poor and look as impressed as I am by Wayne Rooney I think he has a massive job to try and turn that around um, like if anyone could do it he can but yeah oh I, I yeah I, I wouldn't I wouldn't like to be back in Derby County to to win anything at the moment. What's that saying then? Those four. Those four are coming in out of the magic box at twenty five to one. Um, <laughs> as always, we are happy to give that a right good boost for you lads. Um, <laughs> Listen, as this I always it, say, Al, to you, I can sense it. you only need to be right once. That's this is the beauty of doing an actor like this. You only need to be you can be wrong twenty times and right once, yeah. and you're still in clover. So best of luck, fingers <laughs> crossed, we can get it done this weekend. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Merry Christmas! Get Christmas money in. Get, yeah. your, get, your, get your Christmas this money in in that one. Right, I want to finish this week, Al, by yep. <laughs> talking about one of the greatest stories that I've seen that where my eyes nearly popped out of my head when I saw it. Mr. Mario Balotelli oh, yeah. to Barnsley, <laughs> question mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. What do you think of that one? I think, A, I don't think it'll happen, incidentally. Um, <laughs> where, what's Barnsley? Is it Oakwell? Oakwell, Oakwell yeah, 16th Oakwell. in the Champions. Uh, I think there was something to do with, the, I think the chap who owned Nice or co-owner of Nice has mm. got something to do with Barnsley or something. I think it might have come down from, from that route that he's obviously... Uh, he's, he's not in Italy anymore, Will, is he? Where is he? No, he, left, he left Brescia. He was, uh, he was a free agent now. And look, when I say this to you about Mario Balotelli, because obviously I remember him very yeah. well at City and you know, Liverpool oh, yeah. fans enjoyed him for remember, a little while. Well. The one I remember is when he lifted the T-shirt yeah. and says, why is, it, why is oh, it always me? I was there, Brilliant. mate. Why always me? That Absolutely. was at Old Trafford when we beat, we beat United 6-1 at Old Trafford. Brilliant. Um, but have a guess how old Mario Balotelli is. I mean, in my head, he should be 53. Uh, I was going to say that he's, he's, he's a couple of years younger than me, so 55. Um, <laughs> how old is Mario Balotelli? I'm going to say 33. He's just 30. So he's only 30 years old. He's 30 years old. This is a guy that we've seen start for Italy at World Cups. Just the idea of him coming to Oakwell. And I love Barnsley. I love Barnsley as a club and what everything they're about. But Balotelli to Barnsley... I mean, I can see it. It's a match made in heaven. They're going to fall in love with each other. <laughs> yeah, until he gets there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it would be just for Barnsley Football Club, fantastic. For the championship, it would be brilliant. And, you know, listen, first and foremost, as much as he's crazy sometimes and extravagant sometimes and flamboyant sometimes, there is a football player in there. There's no question about that. And would he be a good addition to Barnsley? Then, my goodness, of course he would. You know, if you get a Balotelli that gives you as much as he can give you, which whatever that is, um, we'll soon find out. But I would love to see Mr. Balotelli back in England playing. Uh, he is whatever you think of him. Love him or loathe him. He's still a little bit of box office that we had before, and it'd be nice to get him back. He's a football player. Surely he wants to play. And if that means it's Barnsley, because he's got a connection to an owner that he was at a club previously then hey I'm all for it well it'd be absolutely fantastic yeah I love it I love the idea of Balotelli being top scorer in the championship come May oh. um, Al great <laughs> to speak to you this week mate have a great week you're at uh, Deep Doe you're doing Preston Sheffield Wednesday I'm doing Spurs yeah. we'll have lots to talk about next week as well and of course we'll yeah. have another winning actor for you guys so we'll see you next week cheers